Good evening, I'm Ann Medina, and welcome to the Leaders' Debate 2000, coming to you live from the National Arts Center here in Ottawa. There are five party leaders participating tonight. They are Jean Chrétien of the Liberal Party, Gilles Duceppe of the Bloc Québécois, Joe Clark of the Progressive Conservative Party, Stockwell Day of the Canadian Alliance, and Alexa McDonough of the New Democratic Party. Tonight, these five leaders will be giving opening and closing statements. They will be answering questions from a panel of journalists, and most important, they will be debating. The main part of the evening will be divided into five segments, with each segment devoted to a particular theme. The journalists will introduce the five themes. The leaders will then debate that topic. A note about the debates. The parties have agreed that the debating segments would be best served if they were as unrestricted as possible. My role during the free debates, therefore, will not be to sit by with a stopwatch. However, in the interests of fairness in this debate of five leaders, I have been asked to intervene in the following situations. If a leader has been trying for a period of time to make a point and has been unable to do so, if the discussion becomes such that no one can hear or understand what is being said, and unlike previous debates, if a leader has been the object of a serious personal attack, I've also been asked to make sure that leader has a chance to make a prompt and brief reply. So those are the rules, and they are your rules, so I know you'll honor them. Also, for the viewer's information, whenever the leaders are given a time limit, a digital clock tells them how much time they have left and when their time is up. I hate to interrupt, but that is my assigned task if they tiptoe past the zeros. And finally, draws have been held to determine which leader leads off in each segment and the order of opening and closing statements. So that gives you an idea of what's coming up tonight. Now let's begin with the opening statements. Gilles Duceppe, leader of the Bloc Québécois. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm here tonight to tell you that Jean Chrétien does not tell you the truth when he says that the question of Quebec is settled, that it has been settled with Bill C-20, the so-called Clarity Bill. The future of Quebec is an issue that will be settled by Quebecers and by Quebecers only. If there is something that is clear in Quebec, it is the fact that not a single political party, including the Quebec Liberal Party, had neither supported Bill C-20 nor approved the 1982 Constitution. I am the leader of a sovereignist party who believes that Canada and Quebec need a new partnership based on full respect of each other, based on the fact that we are two distinct nations which could work together as sovereign countries in a new political and economic partnership. And it is true more than ever in a globalized world. But on November 27, it will be a federal election, not a Quebec referendum. Today is Evaluation Day. The last few days, Jean Chrétien has said that he felt sorry for cuts in health care spendings, sorry for cuts in unemployment insurance, sorry for cuts in education, sorry for cuts in social housing, sorry for misspending the, of taxpayers' money. I suppose he feels sorry for those who have been left behind by his government. With all the people I met, I can say that Mr. Chrétien will never be as sorry as them, that his apologies will never recount for the loss of dignity of so many people left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joe Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. I hope Canadians consider their vote in this election very carefully by asking two questions. First, don't you think Jean Chrétien needs to be sent a message? And, and second, who's capable of doing that? Mr. Chrétien has lost his way. He's lost his respect for you, has lost interest in his job, and is squandering our opportunities. It's what happens to some people who are in office too long. He thinks he made Canada the best country in the world all by himself. Remember, he slashed health care and then built fountains in his riding with your money because he thinks he can get away with anything. On November 27th, get his attention. Now, Mr. Day seems like a nice enough fellow. He's trying hard to make us forget that he leads the Reform Party. So he flips and flops from one end of the country to the other, day in, day out. No one knows what his real agenda is. If he honestly respected Canadians, he'd come clean 
about where he stands on important issues. Here's the essence of this campaign. Mr. Kretchen needs to be told that you are unhappy with how cynical and arrogant he has become. You need someone tough and experienced enough to convey that message for you. You know where I stand and what I believe. Give me and my team the chance to do that job, and I guarantee we will not let you down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Stockwell Day. Ladies and gentlemen, I am doing what I am doing out of a great sense of love, a deep and abiding love for this country, and out of a grave concern for what this government is doing to it, but also out of a great hope for what a new government can do, a Canadian Alliance government. The Canadian Alliance will bring, with its legislated funding levels for health care, will bring health back to the health care system. We will bring respect to hardworking people with the broadest system of tax reductions our country has ever seen. We'll bring the word just back into the justice system. We'll bring the word correct into the correction system. And we'll bring truth into sentencing. We'll bring pride and resources back to our armed forces. We'll bring gratitude and support to the family farmers of this nation. We'll bring strength to our social programs. We'll bring hope and opportunity to our young people, the likes of which we haven't seen in this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have had enough of broken promises, arrogance, waste, patronage, and secrecy, if you're ready for the change that the Canadian Alliance can bring, then I ask you to do that. The Canadian Alliance will bring restoration to our eroded democracy. We will bring a sense of achievement and destiny to all we do. If you believe, as I do, it's time for change and new government and new leadership, I ask you to support the Canadian Alliance. Thank you. Alexa McDonough. Good evening. You're about to hear other party leaders talk about how they want to use Canada's unprecedented surplus, an astounding surplus of over $130 billion. You'll hear a huge fight about who can cut corporate taxes deeper and faster. I want to talk about some different choices. I want us to use that surplus to save health care. Stockwell Day supports two-tier health care. Whatever he calls it, I'll call it what it really is, an end to Medicare. Joe Clark supports more or less the same. And Jean Chrétien? Jean Chrétien masquerades as Medicare's savior, but he's the one that put it on the critical list, and the record proves it. $13 billion ripped out of health care alone. Patients paying for MRIs out of their own pocket. Nurses and other health workers stretched to the limit. An aging population, yet not one penny for national home care. Soaring prescription drug costs, and yet not a penny for national pharmacare. And yet Mr. Krejcian had no problem finding billions and billions of dollars to cut taxes for the wealthy, for banks and big corporations. They've made their choice. The New Democrat choice is different. Our choice is to seize the opportunity and invest that surplus in the things that matter most to you and your family. Jean like Chrétien, thank you very care, much, Ms. McDonough. Thank you. Jean Chrétien. Good evening. Elections are about choice. Never have the choices been so clear. Canada needs a strong, active national government to speak for all Canadians, to keep our economy growing, to protect our public health care system, to give Canadians the dignity of work, to help the most vulnerable in society, to prepare for the new economy of the future, and to cut taxes in a fair way for middle and low income Canadians. Others advocate a very different approach, a weak national government that leaves almost everything, including health care, to market forces or to the province alone, Canadians expect much more. We are more than just citizens of a single province or a single region. We are more than just taxpayers. We are citizens of a great country. We have responsibilities to each other. We need a national government to protect and strengthen the social fabrics of our society and the unity of our country. Canada is on the right track. 
Our economy has never been stronger. Let us continue to work together to ensure that the Canada of tomorrow leaves nobody behind. Thank you, Mr. Kretschia. And we now turn to the five various themes of the evening to be introduced through questions from our panel of journalists. And they are Craig Oliver from CTV, David Vienno from Global News, and Jason Moskowitz from CBC News. In each section, a journalist will ask one of the leaders an initial question on a given theme. And the other four leaders will also give a timed response. The journalist will then ask that same leader a second question, and after a brief answer, the other leaders will be free to jump in, and the debate begins. I might add the debate's producers may allow the reporter to ask a third question. And finally, each of the leaders will have 30 seconds at the end to make a final point. The first theme relates to justice and social issues, and I'll ask David Viano to address the first question to Alexa McDonough. During this campaign, there's been a lot of discussion about values, especially as they pertain to abortion, gay rights, and the death penalty. Canadians want to know, will these issues jump to the front of the political agenda as a result of this election? Well, let me say, first of all, I think uh, elections are about values. I think politics are about values. And I think one of the things that concerns a lot of Canadians is that the very uh, values that they uh, hold most dear are being shunted aside by the choices that are being made by this government. I think we know that uh, the, the uh, health care system that we have built together in this country reflects the values of sharing and caring uh, and uh, with the decision of the government to ignore that priority, then uh, that's a value that is being torn down. Uh, I think Canadians are concerned about the fact that the government is ignoring these very important values while we see creeping onto the agenda in a, an increasing atmosphere of intolerance uh, issues that have to do with limiting choices of people, limiting the choices of women to make about their own uh, reproduction and uh, their, their own uh, bodies. Thank we you see... very much, Ms. McGonagall. Gilles Doucet. Yes, when we're talking about values related to justice, I think there's two major issues we're facing. One of them is certainly the Young Offenders Act. And we do have in Quebec, we believe, and I think the House Committee went around Canada and concluded that the situation of Quebec was the best of all the provinces. Well, this government wants to change that law, putting young people of 14 and 15 years old in prison. We think this is not the way to re-educate the, the, young, the young offenders. Secondly, we're facing the organized crime, especially, I would say, the bikers gang. And I said that we have to, by not using the wind standing clouds, but to, to realize that within the Charter of Rights and Liberty, there's some reasonable limit to the right of, of, uh, of association. I don't think the right of association was made and was, was made for criminal uh, organization. Just like the right of freedom of, of speech was not made to have hated propaganda. I think the Charter was very clear on that. The Supreme Thank Court rendered just, uh, judgment on that. Thank you, Mr. Duceppe. Joe Clark. Well, on the question of values, I certainly think that a woman's right to choose has been settled in this country, and it should not be opened again by referenda or by other ways. If Mr. Day wants to open it, he should have the courage to go out and open it directly, not use some indirect backdoor route such as a referendum. There's another issue of values here, and that has to do with the value of Canadian democracy. We pride ourselves on being a country where views count, where Parliament counts, where Parliament is respected. Under Jean Chrétien, the respect for our central institution has diminished sharply. Look what he tried to do in keeping the, the uh, uh, Auditor General away from the House of Commons. Look at the treatment of ordinary members of Parliament under his government, forced to break into tears when they're forced to vote against their conscience on the floor of the, of the House of Commons. We need to restore that kind of democratic value in the country. Thank you very much. Jean Chrétien? For me, for me personal values and personal safety is extremely important for all. You know, politics in that is always very complicated. We have to be very careful because we need to balance the goals that we have. Of course, 
we have to have a good police, and it's why I'm happy that we were able uh, to increase substantially uh, the allocation of funds for the, R the RCMP. And I was very proud to be able to name uh, as uh, the new commissioner the one who was the head of organized crime unit because organized crime is a very difficult problem not only in Quebec but everywhere in Canada. We have to maintain the balance there between having order but at the same time to permit especially the young to have a chance uh, to rehabilitate. I agree, we cannot put uh, kids of 12 years old in jail. We should try to rehabilitate them. Those who are older than that, who come at a very difficult Thank crime, they should much, pay the price Mr. for it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chrétien. Stockwell Day. Well, David, uh, this question was specifically related to uh, abortion and gay rights jumping to the front of the agenda, as you uh, phrased it. And it's been interesting to watch. These are very sensitive topics, and I think the ultimate of respect has to be accorded to all people who are involved in those discussions. I've said clearly every year of the 14 years that I've been in government that I happen to be one of those people who believes that life begins at conception. Many doctors agree with that. Many do not. Many citizens agree with that. Many do not. But I've always said it should be talked about in a, in a very respectful way. The Canadian Alliance itself doesn't have a position on that particular topic. But we do have a position saying if citizens want to discuss issues and want to discuss things, they can be free to do that. We even propose referendum on any variety of issues that citizens, not a member of parliament, that citizens feel are important to them. And where we're having this discussion, this or gay rights, and the Canadian Alliance position happens to be the same as the federal liberal government, defining marriage in law as the union between a man and a woman. And we should discuss those things respectfully. There are no hidden Thank agendas here. Thank you very much, here. Mr. Day. Thank you. And now, David, I believe you have a follow-up question for Ms. McDonough. Um, another issue that arouses Canadians is gun control, and there's a pretty stark degree of choices here on the stage today. And I'm wondering if you could let Canadians know if uh, you think gun registration will make our homes and streets safer. I think it's very clear that uh, stricter control of guns is important in, uh, in keeping our streets uh, safer. No question about that. Uh, New Democrats... Uh, uh, didn't support Bill C-68 because we think it failed to address some legitimate concerns of Aboriginals in this country, of Northerners, of people in remote areas. But we are absolutely clear about the stricter control of guns. We must be concerned about the possibility of guns being used in instances of domestic violence, and they must be removed to make sure that doesn't happen where such threats exist. We have to ensure that uh, concealable weapons are not permitted and we have to be very concerned to ensure uh, that we don't embrace the kind of gun culture that all too often I think is coming to the fore these days from politicians particularly who are interested in exploiting the fears that people have about uh, lack of safety in our communities. And more, foremost, we have to be concerned about prevention with respect to these issues. Gun registration as proposed by the Prime Minister is typical of the philosophy of the Liberal government, which unfortunately takes too much time focusing on the rights of the lawbreakers and not enough time on the rights of victims and law-abiding citizens. And that's a significant change that Canadian Lion would, would bring in terms of justice policy. Take gun registration, for instance. As Ms. McDonough has said, we happen to agree at the Canadian Alliance that we should control the illegal use of firearms. But what does the Prime Minister propose? A system of registration that has already blown out some close to $400 million. We're told there are almost 400 active officers, RCMP officers, now administering a system that will not work. But, we but propose... I, I, we, uh, just Day, let me Mr. finish, Day, uh, Mr. You uh, talk about me. Yeah, yes, because it's very important here to note that the system that you're talking about is going after innocent people. Now, why are we not proposing a system of mandatory sentencing for criminals no, who break the law with a firearm? It's supposed why to don't we restore the, the funding to the ports police? Why don't we deal with the criminals? There's a great reluctance on the part of Mr. Chrétien to deal with the criminals. It's far easier for him to go after who to appear at the Mr. Chrétien, we want to know from you if you will repeal the gun law bill that is in front of Parliament. Because this is a bill that is very important in the cities. You remember a few years ago after the tragedy in Montreal, the women who came in great number urging the government to have a bill like that. And look at the result. 
In Canada, we have eight times less murder by gun than in the United States. For us, it's extremely important to give the security of the people in their home well, but, and well, to register. Mr. Clark, Mr. 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 Clark, on that issue, Mr. Clark, I think I think I won the toss. Eh? We were supporting it. No, no, you were, yes. you were supporting it. You were supporting it. And well, one thing I'm I always happy when you're That's supporting it. me, sir. But be worried, we're, it won't be the case in, in, in all the issues. But one thing I don't understand is that people don't have any problem registering a car. Why would be a problem? Why, why would it be a problem to, to register a gun? I think most probably when the at the beginning of the last century, when cars appeared, people were opposing to register a car. But I mean, if we can do that, we can do it for a gun. I don't see the philosophy behind the opposition to, to the gun control law. The Canadian Alliance, the, the, Cana the Canadian Alliance, since Mr. you Mr. both asked, asked me the question, question, the Canadian Alliance I'll, I'll is saying Clark, very clearly. The question Mr. Is, Clark, the, the answer, you my answer to the, the question, Act, Mr. Clark. I would repeal the, the Long you Gun would. Registration Act because it doesn't work. You know that I was very active in having passed in this country a gun control legislation that did work. This one does not. It costs $400 million at last count, money that would be far better spent going to the RCMP rather than, than the, the little handouts in your deathbed repentances to put uh, money back into the, into the RCMP. I want to have gun control legislation that works, but I do not want to take... Uh, honest you're people in the country and ways, turn Mr. them Clark. into scofflaws. You know, Not you're, at all. You're, I'm being you know, very we clear. We want about, to have uh, a very good control of guns in Canada. It's extremely important in, everywhere. Your and law people, doesn't work. Right. Your law it's doesn't working. work. It's working. It will be. Mr. In a, Cretin, fact, I may talk about maybe. security, sir, but every time we bring an issue forward which would truly bring security to our streets and our homes of this country, you do not want to support it. We want a parole system that would, that would provide parole, but not, not in a way in which a criminal can demand it as a right. Parole should be there as a privilege to be earned. And, sir, the newspapers are filled daily with stories of people out on parole for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time. And we have asked repeatedly that you would change this. You will not change it. Whether it's serious, sir, let me finish this. Whether it's serious criminals like that, whether it's other issues like the Sharp decision in January of 99, which said very clearly and made a decision that child pornography possession was going to be all right, 63 of your members of parliament asked that you do something, that your government do something to protect kids from now this law being suspended on child pornography. And when it came to a vote, when the Canadian Alliance brought forward a proposal that would protect kids from child pornography, you would not allow your MPs to support that. Sir, I've said before, when the government of the land refuses to protect the children of the land from the predators of the land, that government should forfeit the right to govern you know, the land. We are for the rule of law in Canada. And You're when not there for is, children, no, sir. And we have you are to not go for children. To the, uh, appeal courts and to the Supreme Court. Your only remedy to any problem is to put aside the Charter of Rights. In a society that function, you I'm have to make I'm glad you said sure it tonight. You're putting the rights of a pedophile oh, over children. I'm glad to hear you say it tonight, Ms. McDonough, I believe you had a point, Ms. McDonough. I think it's very clear that Canadians are concerned about any, any amount of criminal activity sure. and exploitation of children. But I think Canadians are also concerned that we know many of the things we could be doing that we should be doing to prevent the kind of problems that are happening in our communities and the kind of exploitation of children. How can it reflect the kind of values that Canadians embrace when we have 1.3 million children in this country living in poverty, when we know that a dollar invested in a child at risk saves seven dollars later on with respect to children running into problems with the law or failing it's, to get an exactly education. It's a question of priorities. It's a question of why we don't seize the opportunity we have with this surplus to invest in the things that we know will prevent crime. It's exactly why we have uh, increased the tax credit for families with children to $9 billion. It's why on the 11th of September we signed an agreement with all the provinces uh, to help the Early Childhood Development, a program of $2.2 billion and to help the families, to help the young people to start on the right foot in society. Sir, you, talk, you, talked, about talking about it, Madame, sir, you talked, you talked about the Charter of Rights. Sir, you aren't talking about it. You talked about the Charter of Rights. You wouldn't be there to protect children from pedophiles. And yet you were there talking about the Charter of Rights when groups who want to advertise during an election are forbidden that right because of a law that you're trying to create. The courts continue to strike it down. 
down and you're there saying, oh, we've got to bring in a law. We don't want people saying bad things about us during an election time. You're, you're quick there. You're quick there to stomp out a freedom. But where are you for children? Don't talk about tax credits when your own MPs have pleaded with you, sir, to say bring in something to protect children from child pornography. You didn't do it, sir. Those rates of child poverty have grown dramatically during the period that you have been prime minister of this country. And if you take seriously your belief in the values that you espouse, then you shouldn't be acting at the last minute with actions to help children. You should be, you should be acting more quickly. But let me not let Mr. Day get away with sliding away from his secret agenda. It's always a telltale sign when a political leader says, we don't have a secret agenda. As he just said, explain to us. Explain to us whether or not it is the policy of your party, as everybody's been told, going door to door, using your little manual, that, that, a, uh, that a referendum could be triggered by citizens or by groups uh, powerfully supporting you uh, with, with, uh, with in the neighborhood of 400,000 uh, signatures. No, why don't Joe, you have the it courage? Is not the policy. What, is, oh, is what not, is the policy? Is your, what is the policy then? Joe, you asked me a question, Why is it in your document? For a leader who owes his election to the anti-choice movement, you asked me a question. Now I'm going to answer it. All right. Thank you, Alexa. And thank you, Joe. You've had 30 years to make your point. I'll take 30 seconds to make mine. It's very clear, ladies and gentlemen, that we propose to allow citizens when they want to, when they decide, not when members of parliament decide, if they want to have discussion on a serious issue, they can do it, as Switzerland does, as Australia does. How many does. And 3% three three percent percent is not the number. Oh, why, that we why will take out. Why did you say it was to the Alberta Joe, report? Joe, why did you, why did you just change let your me position? answer the question. I, I'd like you to stay I supported a bill position. in principle that had 3%. Uh -huh. I also supported a bill that had 10%. And what I support oh, yeah. more than anything is going out to the people and allowing the people to make a decision. It's a number the people will decide. That's something that's for. Mr. Ducette, the old I believe you can find it. I have a question for Mr. Ducette. I have a question for Mr. Ducette. Excuse me, no. all of you, please, please, Mr. Uh, Ducette. I, thought we were I think we're about trying justice. to, uh, Mr. Ducette. Yes, I'd like to know from the Prime Minister if he agrees that uh, there are reasonable limits to the uh, freedom of associations. And uh, those limits do apply, apply to groups like the Hells Angels or the Rock Machines. And we don't have to use the nuts when sending clouds to, to impose those reasonable limits. Do you agree with that? And if you do, we, we, we why don't you act? No. You, I, we had a bill on that, 98, two years not ago. Enough, not enough. And it has not been enforced yet. They say that it's not good enough. Paul, we are in discussion with the provincial government to try to find a better solution. And I said that if the Attorney General can agree, exactly what I'm no, asking they, you. a lot of the national government apply to all the provinces, and we're willing to amend this act if we can find I'm a solution, you, what, but we will not, and I'm happy that you change your position, I didn't change and my you position. don't want any more. Maybe it's the to first time you the understand not, it. That's the not what, notwithstanding clause. We said that we're willing to do that, but we will not use the notwithstanding clause, because when you start to change laws all the time in using the notwithstanding clause, you don't have the protection of the rights of the citizen, as we're so proud to have in the Charter of Rights and Freedom You've of never Canada. Done that that is that for the leader, is that Wraps up once, this sir. section, this children? debate, but Mr. Kretschmer, you're first up, so you have 30 more seconds. Yes, I'd like to talk about the referendum about in the few seconds I have. I am a citizen from Quebec. We have had two referendums. It is very, very divisive in a society. That breaks family and village and, and communities. And you want in your program, Mr. Day, to have referendum on everything that is, is con controversial in the land. We have peace on the abortion issue since the decision of the, the Supreme Court in 1988. Thank and you, Mr. Kretschmer, Alexa McDonough. I think Canadians see once again that what we have is uh, leaders here who don't want to talk about the enormity of the surplus that is available for us to deal with some of these issues, for us to deal with the real social and economic injustices, with the growth in child poverty, with the increase of homelessness, the lack of affordable housing, the damage to our health care and our educational institutions. And yet they don't want you to know that the surplus is enormous enough that we have the opportunity to solve these problems Thank and you. advance true justice and equality. Dr. Day? Sir, by your own words, you said referenda can be divisive and tear villages apart, and yet 
several days ago, you swaggered into the province of Quebec and dared people there to bring on a referendum on the most divisive subject that has ever faced our country. You dared them to do that, sir. I am saying that Canadians, in certain circumstances of their choice, can be like other democratic countries, and referenda rarely take place, but they need to be there, and the possibility needs to be there. And I would never, as you have done, go swaggering into some province and Thank dare somebody you, to have a referendum. Mr. Day, Joe Clark. One of the values of Canadian public life is people standing up and having the courage to speak frankly what they believe. What Stockwell Day is trying to do here with his device of referenda is finding a way in which he, he lays off the blame for actions he wants to take to powerful interest groups who might have supported him during his leadership campaign, to any group that can summons 400,000 people to try to divide communities in the country. That is not a very courageous way to act in Canadian public life. Gilles Doucet. Yeah, since we were supposed to discuss about justice, I want to bring two major justice issues. The first one is the Young Offenders Act, and the other one is the fight against organized crime. Jean Chrétien's government goes against the will of Quebec on both issues. We are against what the Young Offender Act is for. We are for, we are for taking strongest measures against organized crime, and at the same time, the government does not understand, I think, the wishes of Quebec and the needs of Quebec population. So you have the opposite pr proposal on each issue. You're opposing Quebec on both issues. Thank you very much, and uh, we now end the first segment, and we continue now to the second, uh, public finance. Jason Moskowitz, I believe, you have a question for Joe Clark. Good evening, Mr. Clark. So far in the campaign, there's been a lot of attention paid to government money spent for areas of high unemployment. A lot of attention has been paid to the Prime Minister's writing. There has been the talk of the RCMP investigations, the Auditor General. The Conservatives were in power not so long ago, and a lot of attention was paid to money spent then. For example, in former Prime Minister Mulroney's writing, where a prison was built in a very remote part of Quebec. The Auditor General didn't like it, and uh, Corrections Canada thought it was a terrible idea. When you talk about spending in areas of high unemployment, should Canadians just accept the fact that there's good spending and bad spending, depending on the partisan mood at the moment? I'm not sure that the question follows from the... Uh uh, from the, uh, the um, what, did, what, did, what did Pierre Trudeau used to say when he refused to answer questions in the House of Commons? Uh, grandmother didn't have wheels? <laughs> the, uh, I'm not sure that it follows. Um, I think that there are some very good cases that can be made for, uh, for public investment uh, in, uh, in, low, in, in low growth areas. Uh, I think it was wise for us to help, for example, stimulate development in Summerside. I think it uh, is, is very helpful to have federal agencies uh, moved around the country. You're raising another question. You're raising about propriety of government actions and, and the involvement of, uh, uh, of partisan decisions. That's what we have an Auditor General for. That's what we have a Parliament for. One of the things that I want to see done in, in changing the rules of Parliament is to make sure that Parliament, again, has the control, the power to control estimates. I think when that was, uh, was lost, uh, the, the, uh, the relevance of that institution diminished very sharply. When, when old King John started the idea of Parliament, he did it so that the public could control spending. We don't do that now. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Mr. Thank Cartier? You. For me, uh, it's very, very important that we be prudent with the administration of the monies uh, that are given to us uh, for programs. But I believe that, uh, like Mr. Clark and most of the people around this table, that the resources of a government can be used to help those in need in different parts of Canada. It is why we are together, to be able uh, to share. But administration is complicated. As I said the other day, uh, the government, 325,000 employees is not a corner store, so some mistakes are made. But we have authorized the, the Auditor General now, or rather than have one report a year, he can report four times a year now, so that we are always on our guard, and in the case of the last uh, problems we had, he found that the project, the program of Madame Stewart, the six points to be good, and he said that there was, in all his finding, nobody who has abused uh, the power of where they were. Gilles Duceppe. Yes, yesterday we talked about that, and I think talking about public finances is also, is also talking about ethic. And when Mr. Christian is saying that, uh, uh, a government is facing a lot of problems with subsidies. The problem is not, it is not true. The problem is what is the attitude of a leader 
facing those problems. And Mr. Christian at first denied there was a problem. Then he said it was only representing only 250 bucks and 51 cents. Do you think, really think that there's 21 police inquiries for such a small amount? I think this is more Thank important than that. Thank you very much, yeah. and Stockwell Day. Well, your history's off there, Joe. The Magna Carta in Runnymede Meadow was not some glorious attempt by King Jean to be a wonderful democratic fellow. He was being faced by people who didn't like the way spending was going, didn't like the way they were being taxed, didn't like the way their, their product was being taken to support the efforts of the king, and they wanted a little more input, which is exactly what we want with another Jean today. And in terms of democracy and in terms of the Auditor General, that is exactly the reason that the Auditor General is there. And the Auditor General has given the most serious report and the most serious indictment to the federal government, not just in terms of missed managed spending, that's horrifying enough. But when we see all of the uh, abuse, when we see the investigations that have been launched, it takes it into a far more serious area. And Mr. Chrétien says that, well, you know, big government and every now and then you make little mistakes here and there and it's not really anything to worry about. If you can't handle big government, Mr. Chrétien, then maybe you should move aside because the citizens want more say in how Jean is spending the money. Alexa McDonough? You know, as somebody who believes very much, Jason, in, uh, in the positive role of, gov of government, a proactive role of an accountable government, the mismanagement of so many HRD programs is very distressing. But I want to say that I think there's been a real bum rap done on important HRD programs that do benefit people, disadvantaged people, people in economically disadvantaged areas. And I think that needs to be said. I also think that people are tired of the hypocrisy of a prime minister who would say, as Jean Crenshaw did tonight, that it's very important that we be prudent in the handling of public finances. And if he meant that, how can he explain a decision to give away the lion's share of a hundred billion dollar surplus in tax cuts to people who least need a hand up. How can he possibly rationalize not investing those in solving the problems that Canadians are really concerned about? Sure. Jason, sure. Jason, I believe... I had 30 seconds to, 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 to answer, and all the other it's leaders true. had 60 yeah. seconds. I think we were... So I, think I was surprised I, when you interrupted I apologize. I, I know it's not your the fault. The clock was, was off. I'm sorry I was going by the countdown. Uh, if I think uh, in this matter since there is agreement obviously from all the other you leaders all that. my it's apologies it's me too <laughs> uh, you will now have another uh, 30 seconds 30 seconds okay on your mark get set on Ready. go okay i wanted to say that one of her problems is that the ethic counselor of the prime minister is named by the prime minister he reports only to the prime minister I think when a, a ethic counselor is making an inquiry on the prime minister, it has very, uh, I would say, it doesn't give a sense of justice if he reports only to you and not to the parliament. The ethic counselor should be named by the parliament and report to the parliament, not only to yourself. Thank you very much. We apologize again. Jason, now you have a second question for Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, very briefly, would it be naive for Canadians to believe that there could only be good public spending in Canada? Would that be a naive thought? Yes, it would be naive, and that's why we have things like the, the, uh, the Auditor General. That's why we have uh, commissioners like the Ethics Commissioner. That's why we used to have much more control of Parliament by, by public spending. Public spending is becoming immense now. It's, it's very complicated. The sums are, are enormous. Uh, the time pressures on governments, on parliaments are very high. All sorts of things can be got away with unless there is vigilance. And what's happened over the last several years is that the capacity of parliament to be vigilant has deteriorated. In part, that's because of rule changes. In part, it's because people like Mr. Kretchen do not give the power to the officers of parliament who are supposed to be watching the public books that they should be. It's not just naive. It's a matter of the Prime Minister saying very clearly that he thinks all Canadians should just trust whatever he's spending on and not question him at all. That's the thing that is galling more and more of our citizens, that we shouldn't dare to question this. And when it is questioned or the opportunity to question is there, his members of Parliament don't even show up. The one opportunity, sir, before the election where citizens would have had an opportunity to talk about your spending, which is reckless, which has involved RCMP investigations, 
Republicans. Your members of parliament didn't show up to that room. Some say they got lost. Some say it was a conspiracy. I'm not sure what you say, but sir, have you, have you disciplined your members of parliament for such an affront to democracy? Have you told them it was the wrong thing to do? They yes or no? Have, yes. We will know. They should have been there and they met the morning Did after. you tell them that? But I have to tell you that about what is Don't public tell us financing. Didn't know what, the, no. the, what, the what is public was. financing? Look at what happened in the last few years. You have to look at the old picture. When we started, we had $42 billion deficit. Oh. Oh, no, no, but it is the reality. I mean, because of good administration, after the second, at the end of the second term, now we're debating because of the free what trade to do with the huge of the American surplus. economy. Had you know, we to have, do that with you. gave us the opportunity to reduce right. taxes, but to increase money in research and development, in innovation, in uh, in healthcare, in and, and for children, right. in and, and for the writing of every member of parliament through the program of HRDC. It is what we have managed to do in public financing but, is to get rid of the mess but, that had been created by thing, your government when you were a minister, Mr. Carlin. But one thing, but one thing that was have. certainly naive fault. was for your Ministry of Human Resources to pay for an invoice of $420,000 and an invoice entitled Invoice for missing invoices. I mean, I just can't believe a government is playing with taxpayers' money that way. I know that your favorite song is Don't Worry, Be Happy. I'm telling yeah. you the next one will be Be Worried as an Acquiry. Yeah. Yes, but I have to reply to that because it's addressed to me that this, you're a former union leader. You went to protest there. And the president of the union told you, if Mr. Ducep wants to score political points, he should not do it on the backs of the workers. Because in that venture, they had all lost their jobs in 1998. And today, we have helped them. And I'm you, very happy that 98 employees now are back working there. You're telling me we had you're supporting good. what happened in Placetico while you know as well as me there's a public inquiry, a police inquiry on but that. If, you know that because you know I, I, that your friend is the know. owner of that company. No, if he is, knows pretty well let, there's an inquiry say, on him. Let, let me say Come on, you, you know that and you're no. saying that was justified? Are you no, telling me that nice. tonight? You said, you Mr. said, Mr. Come on. You let, said. The poli let the police do his work. So why Tell are you saying that what was is okay important if you let the police do his work? This, this program. Why are you telling me it was okay if you let the you, you agree, me? you agree, she agree, he does not agree. Ms. We Ms. need to agree, Mr. Christian, and I thank you for, I thank you for bringing this up. Excuse me, Ms. McDonough has been trying to make a point. Excuse me, Ms. McDonough has been trying to make a point. Public finances is for Canadians to be able to have a realistic picture of what has actually happened over the last seven years with the Kretchen government in terms of the handling of the public finances. You know, all of these leaders talk about how we are now spending enormous amounts of money but let's be clear that the federal government prides itself on the fact that it, it has reduced public spending as a proportion of the GNP to the lowest level uh, since the 1950s. I think the lowest level since the Second World War. And so it's important for people to understand now that we have an enormous surplus, we've got to reinvest it in the things that will really matter to people what, in their daily lives. But one, the most, thing most, one thing we don't know. One thing we don't know. This is a government okay. that has no but, understanding of the notion of genuine progress, but, genuine but, economic and social progress, because it talks but, but, about how we've eliminated the deficit. But, but we've created a huge health deficit, yeah. a huge but, education deficit, an environmental deficit, an infrastructure deficit. And maybe the accounting systems of this government have to change to one truthfully, thing, accurately one thing, reflect the one, real deficits that have been yes, created no, by the please. bad choices of the Kretchen government. But one thing okay. we don't know is what the liberal yeah. program, because Mr. Kretchen is talking about a 50-50 policy. Paul Martin's budget for the next five years shows a 80-20 policy. And now your Mr. McCallum, your, your new Ricky in Ontario, says that Paul Martin's proposal means a deficit of $2.6 billion. So who's saying uh, the right thing? Paul Martin, Mr. McCallum, or you or none of you? Your party is as confused as reform is, uh, Mr. Kretschmann. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No, look at what we've done. We have I mean, done but the, the right thing. Now? We had the proposition of uh, or dividing the resources four ways, and we've done it. Some for tax reduction. Yes, we have managed to reduce, 50 /50 we have re reduced the taxes by 25%. 
We have decided that we were to pay the, the debt. The first time in 50 years we would have paid at the end of this fiscal year $28.5 billion of debt. We have invested in Medicare, in research and development, in innovation. We have invested in children. We have invested in other social programs. And I have the list here. Okay, after we have invested that what's in your answer? Christmas. Is it an 80-20 policy or a 50-50 policy or is it a 2.6 billion deficit? It is what's the balanced right approach of the, the Liberal Party. The balanced approach of Paul Martin next five years shows a 80-20 policy, not a 50-50. No, no, it's a 50-50. And is Mr. Mac 50-50? Look at the figures. Look at what yes, Mr. Martin yes. proposed. 80-20. And is Mr. No, McAllen... Not Absolutely. qualified no, to Mr. say there's a two point six billion deficit. Mr. It, it I mean, is, I just don't understand who's you know, taking you know, the decision. Mr. Giuseppe and I don't agree on a whole lot of things. We agree on some things, but he is quite right in this analysis that was not just done, in fact, by Mr. McCallum, but it was done by a representative from a credit rating agency. And we're not talking about uh, credit rating on your credit card. We're talking about agencies that rate the credit of nations. And it was that agency, which is no slouch when it comes to crunching numbers, that said, you are off the mark, sir. Now, we're not here to get into the old discussion between you and Mr. Clark on who's the worst money manager. We're talking about the future. And the fact of the matter Where's is, Jim you Denny have said Where very clearly, Denny? you have said very clearly, sir, that you would maintain certain levels of spending. But now we understand there could be a deficit with your level of spending. Don't you see why Canadians are concerned? I, uh, because yeah. you slashed yes. health care last was, time I, in, if, in a choice I, for giving money to I your friends. To you. What are you going to do this time yeah. when the deficit hits with your numbers which show Mr. we could be McCallum, heading for a deficit? You, you, you referred to, he said this, that he is coming into politics because he does not want to have a flat tax that you're proposing, and he's never proposed with a flat us. tax. But oh, if oh, some oh, economists so have a flat deficit, no, 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 if, flat tax. you know, we, we started with 42 billion dollars, and now somebody pretend that we might, in three years from now, have a deficit of 2.5. You know, to face the the situation of 42, and in four years, we were right in a surplus not? position for the first time in generations, well, the for is, first is time right in 50 years, who who right 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 right? you know, we will be able to keep the balance. Who's the the poor and the elderly the and the sick? Well, Martin, That's why you foisted the real we cost of that team, and sir, hope that people can't measure the size of the human deficit that you've created. I want to know With the choices that you've made, you've created a human deficit that we now see on the streets of this country where people are homeless, where poverty is growing, 1.3 million children living in poverty, where, where the health care system is coming apart. What kind of a notion of deficit is it when a government decides that the only thing that matters is shove the deficit off the books and heap it under the shoulders of students who now carry a huge debt load in order to get the, an education? Families that are impoverishing themselves to try to pay for that education. I mean, what is the notion of public finances and public stewardship when the real deficits being created are just pushed under the Since carpet? Since 1998, we have invested in transfer $11.5 billion in 98, $2.5 billion in 99. In the last mini-budget of Mr. Martin, $21.5 billion, dollars plus two This is the way that we're balancing cutting taxes and investing in social programs. This is the liberal way to have a balanced approach looking at the future. The zeros are up. That ends that part of the free debate, and you have 30 seconds, and I... Remind you, 30 seconds, as you know, is a very short time. Stockwell Day for a final comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, the fact of the matter is, when you have had the opportunity, in relation to this uh, very first question, when you've had the opportunity to show your spending priorities, it has been dismal and it's been discouraging. You had the opportunity to maintain health care funding. You said you couldn't do it because of a deficit, but you said you, weren't going to, you were going to eliminate the GST. You said that. You said that. And yet, when you shift, when you have the time and you have the opportunity to save some money somewhere and put it somewhere else, you rip into health care, but you keep the spending Joe going Clark. for these projects that are now under Mr. investigation. Day, your 30 seconds up, Joe Clark. One of the major problems we face now is debt reduction. You say you claim you have acted on it. You acted by accident. 
the, the uh, payoff was because of a surplus generated not by anything you did, but by, uh, by growth in the United States, growth generated by the free trade agreement. What needs to be done in this country, if we're going to be serious about getting our debt down, is to have a legislated regime, a law that obliges governments to pay down the national debt. That's what we'd propose. You don't go anywhere near Gilles, that kind of real action to Gilles deal with Doucette, our problem. You now have 30 well, seconds. I'll try again to have a clear picture of the liberal program concerning public finances. Jean Chrétien is talking about a 50-50 policy. Paul Martin's budget for the next five years shows very clearly it's an 80 20 policy. And now Mr. McCallum, the economist, says that Paul Martin's proposal means a deficit of $2.6 billion. It's very tough for the people, the population, to understand what's the real liberal policy. Could you answer that? You'll have your turn just Jean Gretchen? For me, it's uh, the balanced approach that we had. We, what we've managed to do in the last uh, uh, four years when we propose it in the second red book, to have a balanced approach, reducing taxes, paying debt, investing in economic programs and investing in social programs. It is what we have managed to do. And in health care, we just invested $21.5 billion. We have invested in innovation, in research and development. We have the country that is the most connected countries in the world. We're looking at the Thank future you. with our Thank programs. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Alexa McDonough. I think what Canadians know is that 37 days of Dr. Jekyll doesn't make up for seven years of Mr. Hyde. Oh, and what we've seen with this government is a refusal to acknowledge when they talk about a $21 reinvestment in health care that that doesn't even bring us to the level of health care support from the federal government that was there when the Mulroney government went out of office. When this uh, Prime Minister talks about balance, Where's the balance well, in having a hundred billion dollars surplus? There's the zero zero again, Ms. McDonough. Thank you very much. And let's let's now turn to our third topic of the evening, which is health care. Craig Oliver, I believe you have a question for Stockwell Day. Mr. Day, a lot of Canadians can't watch this program. They're down in the states trying to find medical care. Uh, many others are spending months on waiting lists for surgery for all sorts of di diagnostic services. Uh, you're accused of wanting to import the medical 49th parallel. I want to ask you, I want to ask the others, is this sick health care system of ours fixable and how? It is definitely fixable. What, what is sick about is, is how the uh, Prime Minister is addressing the issue. This particular health care system was robbed of 33% in terms of payments to, promises, to uh, provinces, $25 billion was ripped out of the system by Jean Chrétien. But he had the money for other things and other priorities. The problem, too, now that we're addressing this, we have the, the, uh, uh, Mr. Chrétien, who doesn't want his record being looked at. And this is a very consistent theme through the election. He doesn't want us to look at his record, and so he comes out with wild accusations about other people's policies that aren't true. He has now offended an entire province. He has a premier coming at him for an ad that he's put on television that is false, absolutely false. He's dragging a whole province into this, and he's asking and repeating what our uh, position is on health care. I don't mind sharing you with you my briefing notes, Mr. Uh, Chrétien. No two-tiered health care. Can you read that, sir? Joe Clark. <laughs> uh, Mr. Day is a past master at reducing uh, complex arguments to a billboard. Um, <laughs> you know, I, more, achieved, uh, no, more and more I think he must be running for, uh, for office as some kind of uh, game show host, uh, uh, not, as, uh, not as the Prime Minister of the, of the country. Can the health care system be saved? Yes. Can it be done in respecting the principles of the Canada Health Act? Yes. But bear, uh, there, there should be no doubt that when Jean Chrétien took billions of dollars out of that health care system, he grievously wounded the Canadian health care system. He is personally responsible for the problems in so many of the, of the waiting rooms and hospitals all across this country. It rests on his shoulders. Now, we've got a deal because the premiers forced the prime minister just before he called an election to come together and give some of the money back. Not all of the money. He still owes 18 months worth of money to the provinces, but he won't pay that in his deal. We have a deal on money. We have no plan for health care. And if we're going to build on the strengths of the Canada Health Act... Thank you, Mr. That, Clark. Thank you. Ms. McDonough? 
Of course, our health care system can be fixed. That's what this election is about. That's why it's so important that we recognize that fixing the health care system requires a plan. This government has no plan. The NDP plan sets out very clearly. We have to bring the level of contribution of federal funding to health care up to 25%. We started out Medicare with 50% coming from the federal government. Secondly, we've got to halt privatization. And when we have the Premier of Alberta today stating, and I quote directly, Mr. Krejcian, you've never even expressed any concern to me about the Health Care Protection Act, the beginning of the end of Medicare, then I think we know what kind of a record there has been with this federal government. Thirdly, it is required that we understand that prevention has to be part of fixing health care. We have to understand that environment, a clean, safe environment, is part of fixing health care. And finally, we have to understand that this election is about stopping the squandering of Thank the enormous much, surplus on everything except health. Mr. Doucette. Well, health is certainly one of the major issues of this campaign. But we have to realize that if we're facing huge problems in each province with Medicare, the responsibility lies on the, go on the federal government. The federal government cut in the past something like $25 billion in transfer to the provinces. Jean Chrétien never consulted the provinces to look at the consequences of those cuts. Jean Chrétien cut, period. Today, what I'm basically saying is that in each province, and I think it's particularly true in Quebec, there is a government with laws, rules, and regulations concerning health. What we expect from the federal government is to put back the money where it belongs and let the provinces do the job. Jean Chrétien. Health care, madame, has been the priority of all Canadians and will remain. This is one of the greatest assets of our society, not only a social asset, but an economic asset, because in Canada, for example, GM and Ford and Chrysler don't have to pay for the Medicare that they have to pay in the United States. So that gave them a great economic advantage. And we met with the province and we have a plan, a plan that was agreed by all of them to make sure that we, the money was to be invested properly, to make sure that uh, there will be more doctor, better equipment, better communication. And one element that is very, very important is now every level of government, our government and all the provinces will be obliged to report every year to the Canadian so that they can uh, compare. But for us, we have decided that it was our priority and it's why it is the biggest amount of money that have been allocated since we are in a surplus uh, situation. Thank you, Mr. Kretchen. Thank you, Mr. Kretchen. Uh, Craig, I believe you now have a second question for Stockwell. Day. Clark and McDonough both talked about the Canada Health Act. Uh, it makes it illegal uh, for any doctor. Excuse me. Well, we'll get back to you, Joe. Uh, it makes it illegal for any doctor uh, to bill privately for services covered by the Act. Now, you've been campaigning, Mr. Day, as a great defender of the Canada Health Act. You even say you'll strengthen it with financial guarantees. On September the 8th, in an interview with a national newspaper, you said the contrary. You said that uh, if you were ever elected, you would not penalize. You would get rid of penalizing provinces for violating the Act. Now, which is it? And... Does this explain, perhaps, why Canadians are suspicious about your motives? No, I said there is a better way, and that's to work with provinces and the federal government cooperatively, develop a disputes mechanism settlement system so that you can handle those conflicts. But, but Craig, but, but Craig, oh, there'd still be a hammer there because you have an arbitrary binding mechanism ahead of time that's in place. We're we do it all the time when I was Minister of Labor. You do it in labor management. You do it in trade agreements. You have that mechanism in place beforehand, and that's the hammer. But really, Craig, why people are concerned about uh, the Canadian health care system and uh, the Canadian Alliance position, something very serious has happened here. I have said consistently, and our policy is very clear, and I'll say it again, and the whole country has seen our briefing notes, you may as well look at them too, no two-tier health care. Now, I've said that very clearly. Our members have said that very clearly. It is a clear position, no two-tiered health care. And yet you, sir, have taken out an ad saying that, that we are not telling the truth. So I want to ask you, and would you do one of two things? Things. Either right now, sir, would you call me a liar, please, or would you pull those ads that are wrong? Maybe would you, you do one of the two well, things? One thing I'm surprised. One of the things I'm surprised. And now there's Santa Americana. But you know, what I want to say, Mr. President, let me just answer the question. 
The letter you sent to the premiers, you said that there will be no more cash transfer. It will be tax points. That's not when true. there is tax points, you don't true. have the club to do what we did to your government when you instituted some uh, fees uh, for some uh, operations some years ago because we kept the cash. You, after that, we listened to what you said uh, to the press. And, you know, Jason Kenney, you must know him, he said that I do support the area of private health care. There is another guy, Dr. Keith Martin, who said the party agrees, but we don't talk about it during the election. And Rod Love on TV a few days ago says, we need a parallel system, or we have to discuss that. And the people of Canada, they don't want to have a two-tier yeah. system, one for the rich and one for the rest of us. And you cannot go anywhere with Come clean with the Canadian no, people. You, sir, and cannot, that no, you, sir, cannot. Oh, you cannot. The Prime Let's Minister has asked a very care. serious a question here. Okay. Excuse me, Joe. Mr. Mr. Doucette, okay. you were first. Okay. Thank you. Well, Mr. Christian, what surprises me is when we're talking about health, you're talking about a hammer. I would prefer that we to talk about scalpel and talk about new technology instead of thinking you're the police for the provinces. I think that, I look what's going on in Quebec. We have a law with principles concerning health, with rules and regulation. And the National Assembly in Quebec is capable to, 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 respond, to respect those rules and regulations. They don't need the federal government to come with no expertise in the sector of health. And what you did by cutting $25 billion all over those years was to put at stake the dangers in Joe Party all the uh, health system in each of the provinces. You know, I think the, you don't the, have to play the savior. You are you responsible that, for what yeah, happened. Yeah, but sir, when you say that you respect the five conditions of health, the law on that is very clear. That is how to manage the cash that is given to the province. Why we gave Where cash, this cash is, is to make sure from, you think? In, I mean, it's there not from your so pocket. that if some province, province don't, if yeah. some province don't respect the five conditions. The instrument we have. Did you respect them when you made those cuts? Yes. You oh, broke yeah, all Mr. five. No you broke all problem. five, yes. sir. No, you no, broke all five. You broke all five. The money no. is sir, we just can't accept such an attitude. You just said it yourself. You just said it yourself. Let me tell you that when we formed the government, after the Conservative Party, we had $42 billion. Every level of government had to... We were all in big deficit. Why don't you every, talk let about hundred billion dollars everybody, surplus everybody today? Why don't you talk about the, the government of Saskatchewan? In the February Madame, budget, the government two of cents for health care for every dollar so in tax cuts we, in the we February budget. We had to restore budget. two cents for health care we, we for every dollar in tax cuts in Madame, February. Please. They don't want to hear about 1993. They want to hear about your right. recent. I want to talk about today. They want to talk about your health platform that didn't invest a penny. Not a penny in new home care. Not a penny for a national pharmacare we, program. We have a plan. You're right. And the no plan, cash, Madame, no clothes. If you don't the plan, put the cash in, you give it away in tax okay, cuts. Madame, no wonder health care is in jeopardy and people are wondering when you say you don't support two-tier. They don't care whether you implement it by stealth like you propose or whether you implement it by design the way Stockwell Day re proposes. You know what? It ends up at the same place, that you can jump Madame, the queue Madame, if you if can I pay speak, money Madame, privately. The plan is that there. That is two-tier. The home care is part of the plan. The administration of home care is done by the provincial governments. The three... Where's the, the national three, home no, care the three you and, promised people the in The three NDP governments have agreed to this plan because we cannot run it for them. But we're helping Why them did you financially. It Why and did we you have transferred in February it? 19, uh, 19, uh, 1990 in February in the budget, $11.5 billion. The first money that was allocated to that. In February this year, 2.5, two and in October, 21.2. This is the biggest investment in, in the social field that this government has done. Mr. Krenzi, you, you have not answered, have not answered my question, you sir, that I put to you. In agreement with all the provinces of Canada. I'm very proud that we have managed for the first time to have a plan agreed by everybody. Mr. Day has a point. Mr. Day, Mr. Day, you have Mr. Before. Mr. Kretschmer, you continue to avoid my question. When I read something in the media about what one of your handlers might have said about a position of yours, I go to the source. I ask you, what is your position? Now, I have stated very clearly the Canadian Alliance position is no 
two-tier health care. Never mind taking some distorted newspaper report. This is my position and the position of the Val Canadian Meredith. Alliance. Now, King I Martin, ask you, sir, Jason Joe, Kenny, just, uh, just settle down, Joe. Now, Mr. Kretzian, 250,000 <laughs> members of the Canadian Alliance speak for the Reform Party, and they have said unequivocally, no two-tier health care. I'm saying no two-tier health care. Now, with you, do then. one of two things, please, Mr. Kretzian. Call me a liar or pull those U.S. negative style ads. One of the two, which one will it be? I will tell you, sir, that in what you, when you wrote to the premiers, you said don't no. sign an agreement. No, no, I did not. You will not, we will not enforce Answer the conditions. Answer my question. We, it will be self-enforced. Answer my what question. What kind of a, a system when it's self-enforced? Answer you know, my when, question. When there will be no this, more cash, you're taking all the means indirectly the to make sure that there will be... That there will be answer the question. a two-tier system. Everybody agrees you in know, the country. Answer the question. Their way to the yeah, front so, of the no, line, excuse me. Answer the question, sir. Answer I have been question. very people clear. Can buy no, their sir. Way to the front of the line, answer the question, sir. You can't people duck, are run, and hide. People are paying four thousand dollars for routine eye surgery in Alberta today. Why people won't you answer the question, sir? People are paying four hundred dollars an hour for operating rooms what in Quebec. The reality is, why? sir, why won't you because answer you the question? Because you can pay money to buy is. your way to the front of the system, the and that is. destroys the Canadian dream of Medicare. Why won't you answer Medicare. the question, sir? That it'll be there, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark no, has a point to make. The reality is that Mr. Day, Mr. Clark, now has a point to make. John Pretchen's decision to take billions of dollars out of the health care system wreaked such havoc in that system that it created the vulnerability that allowed the Reform Party uh, to come forward with its proposal for two-tier health system. Of course, of no, course they're ashamed of what they're doing. Of course they're trying to deny don't it. Don't fall into but his trap, absolutely, Joe. But it is absolutely clear. Quit supporting clear. John and now quit look, helping him to duck, Joe. Now look, you, You've got you little enough Mr. support as it is, Joe. Mr. You want to Day, get on side Mr. on this. Mr. Day so raised me. a very interesting issue that I think is worth some, some exploration here. He proposes on health matters to have the role of the government of Canada replaced by an arbitrator. No, is that's that really? not true. Oh, that's not oh, true, All right, Joe. give me another sign. Thank you, for, thank uh, you Joe, because you write, didn't get it. Write it, it out so we can all understand it, Mr. Day. For, for Mr. Kretchen, because this is who it should involve, that particular letter, I was very, very <laughs> clear in that letter. And I'm talking about a cooperative approach. Canadians who are needing yeah, health care, they don't care well, whose jurisdiction it is. Sir. They're just saying, settle it. They want health care when they need it and where they need it. And what I said was, the federal government, as Mr. Giuseppe said, in a cooperative way, with provinces can develop a system where people work together, where people work together and get the service delivered. Now back to the question, yeah, sir. That, yeah. I've said no two to your health care. Are you calling me a liar or are you going to pull the when ass? You you were, which one? Alberta, when you were when you in the government of Alberta, you have started to establish 11. a well, two-tier system and the only way that we could stop you was to hold back the money in Ottawa. And the system you're proposing, there will be no control anymore by by the federal government, That's not so true. very quickly, right. the provincial government will be able to establish a two-tier system, Again, and it's exactly it's what your advisors keep telling everybody in may the I, room. May I you're just jump beyond these false. stunts for a second and you ask should, the Joe, Prime because Minister, you supported Prime Bill Minister, Mr. Kretchen, why won't you give back all the money to the That's provinces question. now? Why are you forcing them to wait until April of, two, of 2002? Why not honor your commitment and give back all the money? How much more damage do you want to do to, to the health care system? Uh, it will be $22 billion dollars that the provinces will be receiving annually. And with the system that... You're not that, keeping that, that, your promise. Yeah, just a minute. Why not keep this, your promise? No, because... No. The system that you existed your under your you system. One, you should keep no, it. let me finish. The system that was you yours. I'm afraid, the cash Mr. Kretchen. I'm afraid, Mr. Kretchen. So the time no is up, Mr. Kretchen. We, the time is up. You will have those 30 seconds in a few moments. Gilles Duceppe, you, uh, your final comment on this round. Yes, I want to say that Quebecers are able to manage their own health care system. The Quebec National Assembly is accountable to the population of Quebec. The biggest contribution of the federal government should be to stop cutting and let the provinces take care of their business. The federal government has no expertise at all in the health sector. The provinces are facing the needs while the money is in Ottawa. This is a real dysfunction of the federal system. Thank you, Jean Chrétien. For us, we are for a one-tier health system. There will never be a two-tier health system like proposed by the Alliance. There will not that be a system a for lie, the rich, sir. and there will not be a system for the rest of us. And we will invest 
You should show. It is our biggest priority. We have invested 11.5, 2.5, and 21.2 billion dollars in the last two budget for health care because we believe, like the rest of Canada, that now that the finances of the nation are in good shape, the priority should be health care. Joe Clark. What's clear is that Mr. Kretchen's government is giving back part of the money it tore out. And when it tore it out, it did it so brutally that it threw the whole system into devastation. Our system was, still is, in chaos. And that is largely because of the actions of this government. Now they've got a deal on finance. They won't even honor all of that. The Prime Minister won't rep reply to the question as to why he promised to give all the money back and is only giving part of the, part of the money back, but there's no leadership. There is no plan for health in Canada. The only way you'll get a plan in health for Canada is with a change of government. Alexa McDonough. And what is clear is that two-tier is here. It's happening. It's happening now. 37 new clinics have opened in, in Alberta since Stockwell Day's provincial government brought it in, since Joe Clark enforced Bill, endorsed Bill 11, and since Jean Chrétien went to Alberta and said, bring it in, Ralphie boy, and then we'll monitor and see what happens. Last night, Jean Chrétien made it clear he doesn't have a clue what's happening in Alberta. And, and what does he now have to admit? Thank you. That he Thank you, Alexa McDonough. Stockwell Day. In, in 1999. Canadian Alliance will stand against two tiered health care system. We also want to legislate a sixth principle, a new one, that will make sure the funding level from the federal government can never, ever again be ripped away as it was by Jean Chrétien. We're not here to discuss who managed the health care system worse. Jean Chrétien is accusing Joe Clark. Joe Clark's accusing Jean Chrétien. I ask you this question at home, ladies and gentlemen. Is your health care system better today than it was seven years ago? Or would you prefer to see all that money put back as the Canadian line Thank says you, Stock and Will the Bay. levels protected? And we now life? move on to our fourth theme. And Craig, you're up again. And I believe you have a question for Gilles Doucet. Uh, Mr. Doucet, uh, I guess what I want to ask you is, once again tonight, you're riding your favorite hobby horse, decentralize, Ottawa's got too much power, get rid of the authority of the central government. Uh, I want to ask you and others, I guess, uh, at what point do you give away so much federal power that you don't have a country left worth having? Although, I guess that probably isn't a concern of yours. Well, I think I see the um, solutions very differently for, uh, that, uh, from all of the other leaders. I think the only solution and this is why I'm the leader of a sovereignist party, is to have a sovereign Quebec developing a new partnership with a sovereign Canada. I think that's the way of the future. We've been trying for so many years, so many options, from Victoria to Meech to Charlottetown. It never succeeded. I mean, it was always a failure. In fact, that'd be my fourth mandate here. I was elected just after the Meech Lake failure. And there's no vision among those parties, and especially with Mr. Christian. I think he, he's the one who, who block, really block, the uh, evolution between Quebec and Canada. Back in 82 with the repatriation of constitution, his behavior during the Meech Lake debate, the social union proposed without the acceptation of Quebec, and the unacceptable so-called clarity bill they voted a few months ago. Thank you, Mr. Doucette. Stockwell Day. The issue of government and federal government and provincial jurisdictions and decentralization, the Canadian Alliance has been very clear. We say we can have constitutional peace and not all the constitutionally wrangling in this country simply by having a federal government that will respect the Constitution as it was written when it comes to the area of federal jurisdiction and provincial jurisdiction. Now, when Mr. Chrétien hears this position, he panics because he has a record of not respecting the constitutional differences in jurisdictions. We're not talking about a massive devolution of power. As a matter of fact, we're not talking about massive devolution of anything. We're talking about a more cooperative approach. For instance, if there's to be a change in the spending power, it would have to be agreed on by seven of the provinces with 50% of the population. And further to that, if a province didn't want that particular agreement, they could opt out with compensation as long as the standards are in place and fulfilled. We're talking about respect for the Constitution, not massive, massive devolution Jean of power, Chrétien. as Jean Thank Chrétien you, is saying. Everybody knows that I'm a Canadian that believes that we need a strong, active national government to prepare the economy of tomorrow 
to protect the healthcare system and to help the disadvantaged. I believe strongly in that, and I will not apologize to anybody to fighting very hard for Canada. But when Mr. De talk at this moment, you know, and what he says, it, he will not decentralize. He even proposed that the provincial government will raise all the taxes and send the money at the end of the month to the federal government. Not true. You, you know, you, you said that yourself. And you, no. you can see the Prime Minister of Canada calling the Premier, send me the money. You're right, it's ridiculous. No, we need a government that can speak for all people of Canada. Strongly making sure that the wealth is redistributed in the land so that those who have less receive more and to have the resources to prepare Canada collectively to be competitive in the new economy of tomorrow. And we need all the strength of all the Canadians working together and we need a Thank government Thank you, Mr. Kretchen. Alexa McDonough. You know, I think it's clear that Canadians want to see a strong federal government. And one of the disappointments is the lack of leadership at the federal government level to stand up to the demands of the Reform Party, now the alliance, to tear down the federal government. To, to stand up to Quebec that basically says, give it all away to the provinces and let us do what we want with it. But you know, if, uh, if this Chrétien government believed in a strong federal government, why would it strip itself of a national housing policy, at abandon having a national housing strategy at all and, and devolve it to the provinces? Why would it completely evacuate any responsibility for a national training strategy in this country? Why would it abandon its commitments, very clear, made during an election to a national home care program and a national pharmacare program? How can they be so hypocritical as to talk to you about believing in a strong federal government and then what they do is turn around and strip themselves of the ability to deliver on a strong federal government. Joe Clark. One of the tragedies of our present political system is that our parties have, have become so divisive in the country. They reflect divisions. You have uh, the Reform Party from the West that, uh, that deals with a Western agenda. You have Mr. Duceppe, who is at least open about, uh, about his, uh, his uh, preoccupations. Uh, one of the great tragedies about the, the success of the bloc is that at a time when proud Quebecers... Well, it is, well, it's a tragedy in this sense. Jean Chrétien's rigidness has sent a, a lot of people who wanted to work within Canada to your party, which does not want to work with Canada. A lot of them came from your party. A lot of them came from my party. And when they were in my party, and when we were in my party, they were able to achieve the Meech Lake Accord. They were able, in partnership, to achieve a free trade agreement. There is a lot that can be done in Canada with a national government prepared to respect the provinces and the people who are proud of where they come from. Mr. One of Mr. Kretchen's great failures is that he has driven away from Canada so many Quebecers who would want to play a much more active and constructive role in building this country. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, Craig, I believe you now have a second question for Mr. Duceppe. Uh, here's an easy one for you, Mr. Duceppe. Just yes or no will do fine. Uh, the Americans had an time. election. They couldn't come up with the president. Anything's possible. For instance, a liberal minority is possible. Uh, if that happened, uh, would you see Mr. Day as an ally? I know he's not a separatist, but Ms. McDonough has just told us that he wants to strip the national government like you do. Would you support him uh, to defeat a Christian government if he was a minority? What I've all, uh, always said... Yes or no? Yes, I'm, I have 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always, yes, and I uh, always said that we'll never be part of a coalition gov government. That's very clear. The other thing I'm saying is that we'll do as we always did in the past, uh, looking at each issue, each proposal at its own value. If it's good for Quebec, we'll support it. If it's not good for Quebec, we won't support it. We don't mind if it's coming from the Liberals. We supported the Gun Control Act. We did. A lot of times we supported measures done by the Liberals. And when uh, the, uh, the Alliance or before the reform made some proposals, if they were good for Quebec, if it made sense, we, we supported it. If it comes from the Tories, same thing, or from the NDP. We don't have that blind, stupid attitude of partisan votes where I'm against because it's come from the red, and because I'm a blue, and things like that. If it's good for Quebec, it's good for us. If it's not good for Quebec, it's not good for us. You're as simple as that. I've also said uh, to Mr. Uh, Duceppe and to others that the Canadian Alliance would never form a coalition with the bloc. But we would, on different issues, agree together, if it's for the good of all Canadians, on an issue-by-issue -issue basis. And what we're hearing tonight here is an argument between the old parties. We, we've already heard them arguing about 
who's the poorer money manager. Then we heard them argue about who hurt health care more. And now, we're, now we heard an argument on who hurt the Constitution more. The fact is the Canadian Alliance position on the Constitution of constitutional peace, simply respecting provincial jurisdiction and federal jurisdiction and being sensitive to that has gained us great support in Quebec. We have people who were formerly in desperation. They were offered the choice between Jean Chrétien or separatism, and they are fed up with that choice. That's an old debate. They're caught in that cul-de-sac. And they, when they see the offer of constitutional peace and respect, respect for the rights of provinces, this is why many people from the Tory party in Quebec, even from the Liberal party, and significantly people who formerly were with right. the bloc are joining the alliance saying they see a future for a strong Quebec right. within a confederation with a federal government that but will Mr. respect Day. them. It's called Mr. respect Mr. and it works. You guys should try it. Yeah, but Mr. Day, what you're basically proposing is that you will respect the 1982 constitution. And you know what? There's no one supporting that constitution in Quebec. Even the Liberal Party is against it. They won't sign it. All the, 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 all the prime ministers in Quebec, federalists or sovereigns, refuse to sign that constitution. So if you're telling me that you, you will respect a constitution that we don't recognize, I don't think that's a, a very good option for Mr. us. Mr. Duceppe, I, I said like clearly, to say uh, just a sec, Mr. Duceppe asked I me can. a question. Let's respect him, even though he's from a different party. I've said very clearly in my speeches that the Constitution of 1867 laid out clearly those jurisdictional guidelines that form the base for discussions. And then if provinces and the federal government want to agree together on that formula of seven, seven provinces, 50% of the population, with the opting out clause for a program as long as the standards are being met, that type of constitutional peace is achievable. And that, uh, Mr. Giuseppe, you're aware within your own province, people, uh, editorial writers and people who are constitutional experts on all sides of this question have said the Canadian alliance is on the right track we'll in terms of constitutional peace. We'll see the results of November 27. Certainly, Canadian alliance is on the right track. We'll see the results on November 27. You know, at this moment, I, I want to tell the Canadian, do you want us to start debating the Constitution all the time? Just like the Quebecers, they don't want to hear any more about referendum. Uh, the Constitution can work if we work with the government. We have signed a, a, right. the first time a plan on health with the provinces. We just signed a, a labor market agreement development with virtually all the provinces. The National Child Benefit Program was agreed by all the provinces. We just signed mm -hmm. an infrastructure program. We signed an agreement, a very novel agreement on early yeah. childhood development. We have signed a social union you know, we, for Quebec. We have uh, managed uh, specially to, to pass an amendment to the Constitution on the problem of the Linguistic School Board. You know, this, this federation can, can work when we want. Yeah. The Constitution is there. But, but, we uh, have all to respect the, problem, the Constitution. The, the problem with you, Mr. Chair, is to have a working. debate but, on the yes, Constitution but the, problem, again. the Constitution has very deep roots in the daily uh, life of the citizens. When you're telling us that you don't want to have to call a provincial prime minister to receive money, you find it normal that they have to call you to receive money? I mean, you have that kind of strong government that Quebec doesn't want. Not only sovereignists, but also federals. They don't agree with your, your past vision of co yeah. the relation between Quebec Monsieur and Ducet, Canada. For, you know very well that one of the role of the national government is to collect money across the land and to take money through equalization programs to give money to the provinces who are less fortunate. And Quebec is the biggest recipient, I'm telling recipient you that of that. We would if the government of Canada have didn't have the power to collect we, the money, we Mr. could not Pritchett, give Quebec I, I don't equalization accept that. Payment. I don't accept that. Neither not, Nova Scotia, it, maybe neither you're giving, Newfoundland, you're giving, neither Manitoba. You know, maybe you're giving, giving us money for equalization payment, but we'd like to have money and, as investment. Mr. Duceppe. Not the same quality of money. Ms. McDonough. It's very hard for Canadians to take a lot of comfort in Jean Chrétien's notion of the importance of collecting money in the federal hands and then redistributing it to those who most need it. When this is the government that has torn down so many of the important social programs. And you know, when Mr. Chrétien talks about how pleased he is with the way the Federation is working, I guess it leaves Canadians understanding why it is that this government's not doing anything about 1.3 million children living in poverty why it's not doing anything about the fact that there are two and a half million people at risk of being homeless because we have no national housing strategy in this country. And if there's that kind of smug, arrogant self-satisfaction with how well this federation is doing, then I guess Canadians understand better 
why the federal government has decided not to invest the surplus in the important social programs that working families depend upon, and instead give away $100 billion in tax cuts to people, the majority of whom least need a hand up. The social programs that this federal government has savaged and now abandoned by deciding to squander the surplus on big tax cuts gives you some understanding of what limited aspirations Madam, they have for one of the, if, one if of the I, I'd like to speak at this moment because just we, have, moment. we have worked in this federation very hard in the last years to put the country in on good footing. Now there is hope in this land. Cut Two million new Can Canadians are working today. There is no more deficit. We have surplus. Now we are in a position Where to invest the in health, in, in training, in, in your new economy, in innovation, How, in science, in research. Of the you know, Mr. Clark has a point. Yeah. Ms. McDonough, and Mr. Parts. Clark has a point now. Let him in. Mr. Oliver has raised an important question about how a parliament might work if there is not a majority government. And it is also a question about how the country works. Necessarily, when someone's been in office for seven years, as Mr. Kretschmann does, a general election becomes personal. It's about you. And one of the things that I've been very surprised about, and I say this to someone who's known you a long time, is how much you have changed in office. You were elected under Lester Pearson, and Lester Pearson talked about and believed in cooperative federalism. That was his idea. You don't fight about jurisdictions. You both respect the jurisdictions of others, and you make it work. And yes, we could do that here, but you don't do that. You don't consult the provinces when you take their money away for social spending or for health or for education. You've done nothing on the homeless. Mr. Clark. You're, you've done, very, you've done virtually nothing on the environment. No, it's a serious issue here. Yes, because, it's a serious because issue, your rigidity, and I would like to reply Your rigidity to drives away so many other people. It's not just that you're always fighting with Lucien Bouchard. No, you're I'm always not. fighting with Ralph Klein, with Mike Harris. No. You're, you, you fight with premiers all the time. Absolutely That's not the not. way to make this country work. There has to be a return to the principles that I thought first okay. brought you into, uh, if, into federal if politics. If I can reply to you, on the 11th of September, only a few weeks ago, we made the biggest agreement ever on health. Because we, the province was first. And we signed the province. It wasn't your initiative. And we signed another agreement, and and well agreement as with as all I the mean. province on yeah. early childhood development. We've signed the same week. We signed the same week an agreement with all the province back, on infrastructure program. But you were giving you know, back the money and, you took in the pocket of the provinces what, and you deny it. Why that we had to cut for at years. one time is because when we formed the government, we were the successor of the Maroney clack administration. We had $42 billion well, deficit you, and we had to clean the mess to restore the finance of the nation. So you made you the province paid for that. The Canadians the helped us and that. today exactly we have good shape because we have all collectively exactly what shown what is needed, Mr. Kretschmann, Mr. Kretschmann, you can't rest on that crutch forever. You've been the Prime Minister of Canada for the last billion. seven years. You have to accept some responsibility for your own actions. You're the guy who gutted the Canadian health system. You're the guy under whom uh, p children in poverty have raised, have, have reached okay. levels of nearly a million in the country. You can't blame that on somebody else. Okay. Part of the value yeah. and I will, of political okay. life I will is not accepting your I will not apologize because there is two million more Canadians working. I will not apologize because we have a surplus. We'll never today. apologize. I will That's not, a problem I will not you. apologize That's because there is hope in this nation and we're looking and forward. And at that no decibel level, we now wrap this part of the free debate and you each have 30 seconds. Alexa McDonough. Well, you know, Jean Chrétien, again, will do anything to avoid talking about that $100 billion surplus. And he will not tell the truth when he talks about a health accord reached with the premiers in September to put money back into the system. And the truth is that it's being spread over four years. The truth is that it's not even going to bring the level of federal contribution to health care spending to where it was in 93 when the Liberals took office. So the issue is in this election, how is that $100 billion surplus going to be Thank invested? Thank you very much, and why Scott are they giving away in tax cuts? 30 seconds. Well, Mr. Kretschmer and Mr. Clark, uh, arguing about who created the bigger problem is not what Canadians are interested in. And they're also not interested in constitutional amendments and the wrangling that goes with it. That's why the Canadian Alliance plan which is clearly to recognize, as I've said before, 
the provincial jurisdiction and the federal jurisdiction is bringing constitutional peace. And I have to say, if Mr. Chrétien was really concerned about peace in the country, he still hasn't answered the question why he waded into Quebec at this time in our history and challenged them to a referendum just Thank days you, ago. Thank you, Jean For me, I think that it is absolutely possible to work with the provinces. I just give you a long list. I don't think that the people want to reopen the Constitution at this time. And I know that the people don't want to have a referendum in Quebec, neither else in the country, like you're proposing, Mr. Day. I think that this federation is a union of people who look forward. And we have managed to put the finances in good shape because our preoccupation is to put the Canada in the position to be the best to enter into the 21st century. Mr. Doucette. Yes, we're facing two visions of Quebec. One is Quebec as a part of the Canadian Federation, and we've been trying almost every possibility around that options for the last four decades with no success, even with people that acted in good faith like Joe Clark did, I think. I deeply believe that the only solution for Quebec is to become a sovereign state and develop a new partnership with Canada based on the full respect of each other, based on equality. And to be equal, we have to have the same status that Canada does have. Jim Clark. You see, when you follow a rigid view of federalism, such as Mr. Kretchen has, you drive people who should stay in Canada away from Canada. That is part of the reason that we have such an important sovereignist movement in Quebec. Those are people whose interests would be better off within the country. And certainly, the interests of every citizen in this country would be far better served if our governments were working more closely together. We're not going to get major constitutional change in the next little while. Mr. Kretchen should not raise that, that false specter. What we need is not a change in jurisdictions, but I'm a real sorry, leadership Clark, by Ottawa but to make the jurisdictions work. We are over on this okay. segment, and we now turn to our fifth and final uh, segment of the evening. And Jason Moskowitz, I believe you have a question on leadership and political future for Jean Chrétien. Mr. Chrétien, when you called this election, you surprised a lot of people. I think that it's fair to say that you surprised a lot of liberals. Uh, Stockwell Day was the new leader of the official opposition, newly installed. Both Mr. Day and Mr. Clark had just arrived in Parliament. They were barely there a month. There was no pressing reason to have an election. It wasn't even three and a half years yet since the last election, and yet you decided to do so. Do you believe that winning elections at all costs is what this is about? Not at all, because I have to tell you this. When we call the election, and you can see it in, in the debate today, you know, we were for the first time in history uh, facing a large surplus. We could have applied the money in a definitive way. We felt that it was the time to go to the people, especially with the alliance who had moved ahead of the Conservative Party, having a proposition of two-tier system for health and uh, cutting social programs, cutting completely HRDC and so on, that we needed a debate on the fundamental issue of the land. And it's why this is an election. We, democracy is about asking the people what they want, what, what they see the, the country developing. And we had a plan. We wanted to go to the Canadian to tell them of the new economy, investing in innovation, investing in research and development. None in the environment, none of the other pri parties talk about the future and what is needed to make Canada competitive Thank into you, the 21st Kretchen. century. Alexa That's McDonough. why we call an election. Alexa McDonough. Uh, you know, hypocrisy knows no bounds. We have here a prime minister who has said that he called the election because he wanted to, to have some decisions about what would happen to the massive surplus we have. And he's not even prepared to address the question of what, what plans does his government already have for the use of that $100 billion surplus. That's an astounding amount of money, $100 billion. And you know what the Liberals have proposed to do with it, first in their mini-budget and then in the Liberal platform that kicked off this election? To give it away in tax cuts to wealthy people, to banks, to oil companies, to big corporations who don't need the tax cuts. Why isn't he proposing the cuts to hospitals, hospital beds? Why isn't he proposing cuts to the number of people who are waiting for cancer treatment? Cuts... To the, to the cost of, of university education. You know, it's a phony debate he's inviting Thank Canadians you, to participate Thank you, Mr. Stockwell Day. 
I said several months ago that if the Canadian Lions continued to grow in popularity and strength as it has, that the uh, federal uh, government under Jean Chrétien or Jean Chrétien himself would in fact call a federal election in the fall. I said that he would do that because he didn't like to see the fact that uh, the Canadian Alliance would have the very real possibility of forming the next federal government. And he didn't want to wait until spring, as we used to hear in the old ads, because he knew there were people in his own uh, company and his own uh, caucus who wanted that leadership quite badly also. So that was that dual pressure. He actually said, even said at one time, it was because I dared him to call the election. Well, you know, sir, I've also dared you to start telling the truth, and tonight you didn't do that. I've dared you to start respecting people. I haven't seen evidence of that in the way you're handling yourself in terms of misrepresenting other positions. And that's why it really concerned me when you walked into Quebec and dared them to have a referendum. Did that mean you were going to call a referendum also? Sir, that was the shabbiest excuse I've ever heard from you in terms of why the third election in seven years. Joe Clark, it's thank fear. you very much, Dr. Fear Alday. is why he called Joe this Clark, election. it is your turn. Mr. Gretchen, let's face it. The only reason you called this federal election was to prevent Paul Martin from getting your job. That's the only reason. You talk about spending that you've now made on, the, uh, on, the, on, on policing or on health. Why did you do that? You did it because you had an election planned. It's not because you have a plan for the country. It's because you have a plan for yourself, not even a plan in the best interest of your party. You wanted to keep out of office the one minister you've had who's made a difference. In, uh, in your government. The, real, uh, the reality of this country now is that we are falling sharply behind where we should be. Our health system is in decline. We have problems of, of poverty among young people and internationally. We are falling behind Ireland, Singapore, Germany, the United States. You run the long, long list of, of countries. You're a prime minister without a plan except to stay in office. And Canadians aren't going to give you that chance forever. You're not going to get away with this again, Mr. Kretchen. Mr. Kretchen, would you like to make a brief uh, response Maybe, to uh, what you've just heard? Maybe. You, you will get, be getting your turn in a second. But uh, perhaps right now you would like to make a prompt response. But for me, I reply that... Very clearly, I gave you the good reason. You talk about Paul Martin. Yes, he is my minister of finance. He didn't want to be minister of finance. I asked him, and it was one of the best decisions I've made. And he is very happy to work with me and look at the team. I'm not alone in that, in that government. Look at the ministers no, that Paul I have. Is. And I, I can is. attract people with me. I have a premier of, of Newfoundland who has come to join the team. I have Alan Rock. I have uh, John Manley. Many good ministers with experience that... Okay. Okay, that are was ready to form a government. Mr. Kretchen, it was supposed to be a brief. The team that's formed the government. Mr. Kretchen, a brief response. Thank you very much, Ms. Duceppe, and we're back on track. Okay. Well, uh, the reasons to have an election, uh, if we believe Jean Kretchen, the first one is to have a debate about values. I think one important value we should have in democracy is to have a sense of ethic. And I think the reasons why we had the elections before the time is certainly because you don't want to have the 21 inquiries made public, the issues of those 21 inquiries, and four in your own writings. The other thing you're saying is that the surpluses, we have to debate about the surpluses, but you had a mini-budget just before you called for an election, and now we don't know if it's a 50-50 or 80-20 or a deficit of 2.6 billion. I, I do believe that there were two main reasons. One was to surprise the alliance. You did it to us back in 1997, I do remember. And the other one is certainly the internal debate between Paul Martin and you for the leadership of your own party. The best way to, 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 to make the, uh, your members silent about that was to call an election, to have all of them behind you because they want to be elected. Thank you. And Jason, I understand you have a follow-up for Mr. Critchin. Mr. Kretzian, the subject is leadership, and it came up during the debate tonight, I think it was Mr. Clark who said, you've changed. You know that I travel with you in local interviews in different cities. Sometimes the first question that's put to you is, have you changed? Are you arrogant? Are you more arrogant than you used to be? Should you win this election? Do you think you have to address that question, and what can Canadians expect in another mandate? I am exactly the same person that I was when I entered politics. That's the problem. 
No, no I'm a been a Canadian. Excuse me, I believe in uh, this Mr. country. Christian has the floor. I believe the in this country. I have so. values. I have principle. I fought for these values and its principle all my life. I've been committed to public life. I, I think that the Liberal Party is a balanced party of the centre who care about those in need, who is very responsible in government. I think that I have a, a mandate from my party to carry on. I, I, I think that Preparing the nation for the next century is very important. It's why I'm so excited talking about innovation, that Canada is the most connected nation in the world, that we have, for example, proposed excellence in research and development, an example that is followed by other countries. Uh, other countries. You know, we're talking about the future in my party. We're not talking about the past. And we, we want you know, to prepare the country. You said and it is my and commitment to public life. You said you didn't change, and that's true, Mr. Christian. I remember that back in 1972, you said good, I broke good. the legs of the Quebec government, and I'm proud of having done that. And you were talking about know. not a sovereignist government, you were talking about the federalist government of Robert Bourassa. I mean, independently of who's running the province, sovereignists or federalists, you always have that same attitude I did. I did. of putting the Quebec at its place and no. making a campaign outside Quebec on the back of Quebec. You know, that's, I will, that's no, your career was built I'm a Quebecer, I'm a proud Quebecer. I know you're a Quebecer. And I, I believe know. in Canada, but I'm happy that you say that I'm the same person. Yes, I am a what Canadian committed to public life. Even public life is, is, is a great calling. And being proud of breaking uh, the legs of, no, of I'm the not breaking the government legs. like you did. I'm making when sure, I'm make, about the I'm making is sure that the country is functioning well. When I became prime minister, and then it costs. when I came, became prime minister, when Paul Martin came to see me in early December 93, and we realized that we had $42 billion deficit, you know, we felt... We, we discuss among ourselves that we will have to do what is needed, so. but most probably we will not we'll survive. We'll make the unemployed pay for that in the provinces. No. That and was the, the solution. The people of Canada. We know that. The people of Canada understood that we were bankrupt and we needed to make tough decisions. We made them, and today the people are benefiting from these tough so decisions. So what's your solution and to now the And we have a surplus, and we're debating what to do. We're not and, debating. You took a and decision. And we no, want to invest. You took a decision for the economic and, and, and social programs. Excuse me, but and could we now decision. go to uh, uh, Mr. Clark? I believe you were next. Yeah, I think there's a very direct question here to ask yes. you. Seven years in office. Uh, what have you done in those seven years? Name one free trade agreement. Name one chain, ma major innovation like the Canada Pension Plan. Name one major change in the country. I'll tell you what you've done. You brought in the Clarity Bill, and you brought in Millennium Scholarships, and that's all. And both of those, to take Mr. Duceppe's point, were actions that ran against the, the interests of the province that, uh, that you came from. But what have you done in these seven years? I'll tell elite, you what you've done. Attitude. I'll tell you what same you've done. You've let attitude. this country fall behind. We used to be a leader in the world. We used to be a country that, that, that other people looked to and took their examples from. It's not just health care that you've cut. You've cut Canada's contributions to official development assistance. We used to be one of the leaders in the world. We're now trailing along behind. You have put Canada in a position where our tax system is so out of whack with the countries we have to deal with that, that, that we, we can't compete. You said at your own Liberal Policy Convention the other day, you talked so much about, about high technology. You said at the, at the conference the other day, e-commerce is a problem. Globalization is a problem. That's the real Jean Chrétien. That's not the electoral Jean Chrétien. You put on a mask for this election campaign, you know, but you have let this country drift. I will reply to you drift. because it's very directed to me. I will tell you one thing. When I became prime minister, I had the biggest problem of any nation. You, the, your government, had let the nation bankrupt, and we have cured that problem. Old, old song. Internationally, now, now what we, we, we have been he around. He contributed a lot when he was you know, the finance minister. You say, yeah. you say to me true. that I have not served the interests of Canada when I introduced a bill on clarity. I will tell you that when we're asking the Supreme Court of Canada to pass a judgment on that, and the Supreme Court of Canada this gave is the direction, guy who we want put a bill discussion. that will make sure that in the future there will be no confusion, that the people so no in Quebec will be. We so don't, fix, we don't it, fix the percentage. No, no. So, so is, is, is that, that the percentage for, for, for is winning I, a I decision? Know, I know. I mean, I that's really so like, like me when I you say that. You would have made a risk. Excuse me. Let Mr. Kretchen finish and then Alexa McDonough. I want Mr. Kretchen to finish. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. 
because I want the, the people of Quebec to have an honest question. If they want to separate, let's you're ask them that. You don't you want to ask an honest question. Honesty? And to reply to Mr. Clark, yes, yes, the President of Canada. What have you done Canada. in seven years? That's my question. Yes, we, we've done a lot. You know, these things are extremely important. To, we, we have a <laughs> surplus. One. We have invent. You know, we have the the you talk about the scholarship. Maybe the internet also. We we have uh, we have in, in, in innovation. We have in the foundation of innovation. System. We have invested in research and development. We have uh, invested in healthcare in the helping the children to start well in life. We have all, all time records for police inquiries. For Alexa your McDonough own has a point. Excuse me, Mr. Duceppe. Alexa McDonough has a point. Tell you everything we've done. It's not surprising to Canadians that Jean Chrétien keeps not wanting to talk about his record. He doesn't want to talk about how he's used the excuse of the deficit to tear down social programs, and yet he won't use the existence now of a massive surplus to rebuild those social programs. But let's talk about his preoccupation now with the future. He says, let's really talk about the future. What is, what is the explanation of this government for having ripped a billion dollars out of the environment, for having dropped the ball, abandoned any legislation that would have established national standards for water, water quality in this country. We don't need another Walkerton. If it's not about the future to talk about investing in the environment, then what is this government's understanding of the challenges that we face as a nation and as a planet? We I have think. a government that abandoned its own endangered species legislation for the second time. It's become extinct. We have a government that has completely dropped the ball in I terms of the major issues. We be, we've tripled toxic waste imports in this country since the Liberals came to power because the federal government has basically taken a pass on providing any leadership on that. Stockwell on the Bay. war on smog, no public transit uh, initiatives, and on and on. I think it's on important to on. observe that there's been some uh, 37 years uh, in public life uh, by Mr. Kretzian. And uh, on that basis of service, uh, I want you to know I, I thank you for that. And I know the pressure on yourself, family, we all know what that's all about. But that is not going to keep me from being very aggressive about the things that you have been doing that I think have been hurting the country. Because I think after 37 years, I think after 37 years, even though you may be well intended, you can get off track. The, the lines begin to be blurred between, between wanting to be prime minister so you can help somebody or wanting to be prime minister so you can be somebody. I don't want to be prime minister to be somebody. I want to help some situations here in Canada and see this nation become strong and see it be a place where our kids and our grandkids will grow up and thrive and be proud of this country. And I think, Mr. Chrétien, over time, I think that's get, that has become blurred for you. That's why I've asked my wife and some of my close friends to say after anything near approaching that amount of time, after 10 years in federal government, I want them to tap me on the shoulder and say, Stock, uh, you've been a great leader, and it's time to move on before the lines start to blur. Because I think the lines between truth and what is not true become blurred. And I think the motives, the pursuit of power for the sake of power, I think it's compelling. I don't, do know, I don't know if any, should, I don't know if any of us... Respect his, uh, his, sorry, Joe, I've respected you for, for years. Well, you Would you just be quiet for a second? Here. And so, uh, should and so Mr. Kretzian, I, I would say, Mr. Kretzian, that over the years there's been the change. And that's why we need, for one thing a four-year election period so that the pursuit Thank of power doesn't become very something much. that you... Thank uh, you This ends this around. part, but you still have 30 seconds for a brief final point, a rebuttal. Joe Clark, 30 seconds. This is a country with enormous potential. There's no country in the world that can do more to shape the, the nature of the new, new era we're entering than Canada can. We can do that not simply because we have made a great success of bringing diverse people together to work here towards common goals at home. We can also do it because we have extraordinary resources. We're very wealth in, wealthy in, in physical terms, but we also have extraordinary human resources. And we have a reputation as a leader in the world. The other day, the Thank country... Thank you, Joe Clark. Gilles Doucet. Well, leadership for Quebec and Canada means looking for the future. And nobody, either in Quebec or in Canada, thinks that Jean Chrétien represents the future. He's a man of the past, a man of confrontation. And future is not in confrontation. Future is about partnership, partnership between Quebec and Canada. And if we want to build a new partnership based on equality, we have to build it without Jean Chrétien. It is impossible to do that with Jean Chrétien. 
Alexa McDonough. You know, we keep hearing from Joe Clark, from Stockwell Day, from uh, Jean Chrétien about the immense potential of Canada. And yet they're prepared, this tax-cutting trio, to basically give away the resources that we need to invest in rebuilding things that matter to working families in this country. When did tax cuts ever build a hospital? When did tax cuts ever educate a generation of youth? When did tax cuts ever assure safe drinking water and clean air for people to breathe? We've Dr. got well to Day. use Thank those you, resources to do Dr. what well we Day. do together as a nation. Leadership is about wanting to serve people, not the other way around. Leadership is about being open and honest and inspiring and motivating. Leadership is about respecting democracy and freedom and working with people to build a plan that makes a country absolutely as great as it can possibly be. Leadership is about making tough decisions based on what is right, not as w on what is politically expedient. Leadership is new, is required now. New leadership is required because of what's been taking place over the last 37 years for Jean Mr. Kretschmann and for others. It's for me, for leadership, leadership is serving the people. There is nothing but more exciting in life than to have the confidence of the people of your riding and the people of your province and the people of the nation. And you have to have ideals. And for me, I believe that Canada is the best country in the world because we have developed values that need to be preserved. We have built this country with people coming from all around the world and making sure that there is no discrimination, that we all have all access to the advantages and the responsibility of being a citizen of this great country. Thank you, Mr. Kretschmann. And we now come to the closing statements from all of you. And I remind you, time is, uh, you have been given a definite time. Please stick to it. Gilles Duceppe, to begin. Well, tonight we ask real questions to Jean Chrétien. We ask him, with those huge surpluses, why he's refusing to respond to urgent needs of women, youth, unemployed workers, low and middle income families. We ask him why he abandoned the regions why he refused to invest in social housing, why he provided grants to his friends and not to those who need it most. Quebecers don't want to give Jean Chrétien's liberals a free hand to continue to waste public money through nepotism and propaganda. They're not our choices. They are not Quebec choices. Things could be done differently. The Bloc Québécois is the only party that has a vision for the future of Quebec, the only party that is free to defend successfully the interests of Quebec at every moment. We need men and women who stand up against organized crime, who cannot accept poverty, who are ready to face the challenges ahead of us. The Bloc Québécois is the only party that, can, that Quebecers can count on to defend their rights in Ottawa. Tonight, I invite Quebecers from all political background, and especially Federalists, to take a moment to consider their options. Remember that Jean Chrétien misled you when he promised to change the Canadian Federation. Remember that the only change that he's proposing is to strengthen the central government even more at the expenses of Quebec. Think of what help would be a Liberal MP muzzled by Jean Chrétien when it'd be time to speak up for Quebecers. Instead, vote for the candidate that knows you, a candidate that will defend your interests in Ottawa and not Ottawa's interest in your riding, a man or a woman free to act on your behalf he blocked Quebecois MP. Thank, Thank you, you and good night. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Duceppe. Jean Chrétien. Canadians know where I stand. I stand for a Canada that is the place to be in the 21st century, with a dynamic economy and innovative people, where prosperity is not limited to the few, but is shared by all, where every child gets the right start in life, where young people have the chance to be the best at whatever they want to do, where farmers and workers are the backbone of the economy. A Canada with a publicly funded universal health care system. First and foremost, I stand for a strong, united Canada with opportunity for all. I have always believed in being positive, not negative. I have great faith in the Canadian people in seeking your support and confidence, I ask you to consider which party offers the most forward-looking platform. Which team of women and men can best form a strong national government? Which leader 
can best speak for all Canadians? And which party can best preserve the unity of our country? I believe passionately in public service. I am human. I'm not perfect. But my commitment is clear. To work hard every single day to earn the trust of my fellow Canadians. To serve the country I so love and help create a better future for all. Thank you. Stockwell Day. Ladies and gentlemen, carved into the walls of the Peace Tower, the building where Jean Chrétien has been seated for over 37 years, are the words, where there is no vision, the people perish. I think we've seen tonight, and I think we've seen over the last seven years, that the federal Liberal government does not have a new vision for our country. I respectfully submit to you that the Canadian Alliance does. And I'd like you to ask yourself the questions over the next 18 days or so, leading up to November 27th. Ask yourself the question, are you proud of the federal government? Are you proud of a record of a government that wastes over a billion dollars and nobody steps forward to take responsibility? Are you proud of a government that has such a culture of secrecy and intimidation that even the information commissioner talks about a threat to democracy? Are you proud of a federal government that has squandered a windfall of surplus that could have been properly invested into the things that matter most? Are you proud of a government with a record of broken promises, arrogance, waste, patronage, and secrecy? Are you proud of a government which, when it is taken to task for these things, it responds with negative ads and things that simply are not true? Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe, as I do, that it's a time for a change and that we can have a government, a Canadian Alliance government, that will bring this change, a respect for democracy, respect for freedom, respect for hardworking people, respect for the future, then I would ask you to support the Canadian Lions team, almost 60 MPs right now in the House of Commons, candidates from coast to coast, standing on a platform of strength and prosperity that will bring to this country, ladies and gentlemen, the great opportunity to see Canadians being Thank everything you, they Thank you, Mr. Day. Alexa McDonough. You know, Jean Chrétien was right about one thing. This election is about choice. And it's about a choice of how we are going to spend an immense surplus, an enormous surplus of over $100 billion. What has not been addressed this evening by these other leaders is why they have chosen, chosen to take the lion's share of that surplus and give it away in tax breaks to people who least need a leg up, who least need a hand up. They've, they've chosen to give it away to wealthy people, to big corporations, to banks, instead of choosing to reinvest that surplus in the services that working people count on in their daily life. Let me say we are the one political party that has consistently advocated that we must direct that surplus to the rebuilding of health care, to building a safe, healthy environment, to ensuring education for the, next populate, for the next generation and rebuilding our public infrastructure. Think how much better Canada could be if we made those choices, if that's what we did with the surplus. And let me remind you that every vote cast counts, that you can make a difference in creating the kind of Canada that working families want. If you select, if you use that vote, to put more New Democrats in the House of Commons to speak for you and fight for the things that matter most to you and your family. Joe Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this uh, debate has demonstrated that there are two basic issues in this election campaign. The first is the need to send Jean Chrétien a, clear, a very clear message. And the second is the need to choose who is up to that job. Mr. Kretchen must be made to understand that he is not above our democracy, that he can't do whatever he wants without regard for you, that he can't take credit for everything that Canada has done and accept responsibility for none of his own, uh, none of his own errors. Arrogance is the right word. Arrogance is the only word to describe that kind of attitude. Even if his party wins, 
this election. You can't afford to let Jean Chrétien think that he's got your blank check. His own star economist said he could run a deficit again, just based on today's promises. On November 27th, get his attention. If you want to get his attention, Mr. Day is not your man. He can't stick with a position, and no one knows what Stockwell Day's real agenda is. He won't take responsibility for what's in his own platform, but he wants you to trust him. He can't shake Jean Chrétien because he doesn't have his own act together. Mr. Chrétien needs to be told that you are unhappy about how cynical and arrogant he has become. You need someone tough, experienced, and ready to convey that message for you. On November 27th, please give me and my team a chance to do that job. I guarantee we won't let you down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. And that concludes tonight's Debate 2000. Its purpose was really quite straightforward to give you, the voters, a chance to find out just a little bit more about the very important choice you have to make on November 27th. Thank you to the leaders. Thank you to our journalists. And thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Ann Medina from the National Arts Center. I wish you a very good night.